John F. Kennedy sworn in as 35th president of the U.S. of A. The Beatles perform the Cavern Club for the very first time and the USSR launches Venera 1 towards Venus. The year is 1961 and this car was originally supposed to be an Edsel product, but now it's wearing just a Comet badge. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that inspires you to drive something different. We cover the classics, vintage, some exotics. We love the orphan cars or brands of car that is no longer around. We dive into history, specs, and design of these rolling works of art. If that sounds of interest, the channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. For those who may have never heard of Edsel brand, it was offered by Ford from 58 to 60. Ford wanted five brands to go toe to toe with both GM and Chrysler. GM with Cadillac, Buick, Olds, Pontiac, and Chevy. Chrysler with Imperial, Chrysler, DeSoto, Dodge, and Plymouth. And I know you're sitting there thinking, but Jay, with Edsel, Ford would still only have four brands. You would still need one more brand to make five. In 1956, Continental separated from Lincoln as a primo brand, much like in 1955 when Imperial separated from Chrysler. In theory, that was to be Ford's five brands, Continental, Lincoln, Edsel, Mercury, Ford. I listed it like that because of M-E-L. Anyway, Continental didn't pan out and was back under Lincoln in 1958. Edsel had three distinctive gears, 58, 59, and 60. The Comet was originally supposed to be an Edsel model, but Ford pulled the plug. I mean, if we're 100% honest, it was Robert McNamara that pulled the plug on Edsel November 19th, 1959. Due to poor sales, it didn't help much that in the year of its launch, 1958, there was a huge economic recession. Ford promoted the mess out of Edsel on a televised program on CBS and it was, for the very first time, first broadcast ever recorded on videotape. Let me paint the picture for you. Ford pulled out all of the stops. They got all the big names in show business back in the day with Bing Crosby, Louis Armstrong, Frank Sinatra, Lindsey Crosby, Rosemary Clooney, The Four Preps, Bob Hope, for a one-hour-long program on October 13th, 1957, called E-Day. Edsel didn't make it for a lot of reasons. Recession, timing, some didn't like the styling of the horse collar grill, but how can one say that this is ugly, but in the same sentence say that this is great? How about this? Or this looks amazing as well. How can people say that the Edsel is hideous and yet dig these designs? Anyway, the Comet was originally intended to be an Edsel model. It's a shame they didn't make it, and I think the design looks great, even if it does sort of look like a Pontiac Tempest in the front. Tempest on top, Edsel on the bottom. Just look how similar these two are. When Edsel was scuttled in the fall of 1959, it's important to note that they were already making the 60 models by that point in time, so they would just finish out the 60 model year. Ford would revise the Comet design and gave it to Lincoln Mercury dealers to sell as a standalone product for 1960 in the 61 model year without Mercury badging. In 1962, it would go under the Mercury brand. Comet was offered from 1960 to 1961 as a standalone with absolutely no Mercury badging. Mercury would offer the Comet from 1962 to 1977 in five generations. 1961 falls in the first generation, which had a production run, which was kind of confusing, from 1960 to 1963. It's important to note that Ford bought the Comet name from Comet Coach Company in 1959. They wanted to capitalize on the space race thing. That was very much going on at that time. 1961, Comet could be had as a two-door wagon, four-door wagon, and two-door sedan. Comet was offered in two trim packages, base or S22. S22 got you the sporty steering wheel, bucket seats, center console, fancy wheel covers, and the better engine. 1961 was more or less a carryover body design that started back in 1960 with a few key differences worth talking about. So let's compare 60 on top, 61 on the bottom, starting in the front. The grills are totally different. 
three side trim pieces on the 61, whereas the 60 has Comet script. 61 has Comet script on the top of the hood. Side mirror placement is different as well as round side mirrors on the 60 versus square side mirrors on the 61. Moving to the side profile, both are very similar. Comet script in the front on the 60, located in the rear quarter on the 61. 61 also has a badge on the roof pillar that is not found on the 60. Moving to the rear, trunk emblems, gas caps, rear bumpers are all different. Comet is spelled out on the 60 right below the gas cap, whereas on the 61 it's stamped in the bright work and it appears smaller on the 60. Moving inside to the dash, they look very similar, if not the same. Let's talk specs. 194.6 inches long, 70.6 inches wide, 53.1 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 114 inches. It weighs 2,375 pounds. Price, $2,000, which is equivalent to you spending $20,587.89 in the year 2023. Total Comet production was 197,263 units, of which two-door sedan variety was 71,563 units. S22 two-door sedan was 14,004 units. Moving on to engines, which there were two engines on offer lurking in the basement, 144 cubic inch displacement, thrift power inline six, 2.4 liters. It's good for 85 horsepower, 4,200 RPM, 138 pound feet, or 187 Newton meters at 2,000 RPM. Bore of 3.5 inches and a stroke of 2.5 inches. Compression is 8.7 to 1. It featured four main bearings. When backed with a three-speed manual transmission, 0 to 60 could be had in 19.1 seconds. Theoretical top speed, 83 miles per hour. Average fuel consumption, 17.6 miles to the gallon. Moving on to the biggest and baddest engine the Comet offered. 170 cubic inch displacement, thrift power. In line six, 2.8 liters. It's good for 101 horsepower, 4,400 RPM, 156 pound-feet of torque, or 212 Newton meters at 2,400 RPM. With a bore of 2.5 inches and a stroke of 2.94 inches, compression was 9.1 to 1. When backed with a three-speed manual, 0 to 60 could be had in 13.6 seconds. Theoretical top speed, 104 miles per hour, while achieving an average fuel economy rating of 16.8 miles to the gallon three transmissions on offer two speed automatic three speed manual or four speed manual let's talk styling just look at everything that is going on in this grill section quad headlights the bezels bumpers the turn signal indicators are down here notice how this bumper pushes up look at how these vertical bars separate the color of the horizontal bars it gives it a really nice look look at how this protrudes it has this kind of gives me late 50s Chevy vibes and how this is curved and these accent pieces here the wheels do flare out ever so slightly, and it's capped off here. Look at these gun sight. There's one on each side. Common script right there. This car has a center line, but not just that. The hood comes to a slight peak here. So just check that out. The hood is fairly smooth aside from the center line and it has these lines going up to the gun sights so just look at how that is it's pretty flush right here but it protrudes ever so slightly and then it gets really aggressive like right here and this car has a cowl Just 
just look at all of the sculpting here. Just notice how this kind of rolls out. This car has a lot of really nice lines. It does have drip rails that run the length of the car. So check out this piece here. this look at all these lines added texture this uh, roof looks very formal notice the rear wheel well isn't flared out it's just straight on look at how this is all sculpted in the back here with a beautiful comment script this is very 58 Edsel right here. Just look at this tail end design. These nice lights. What do you guys think? Do you think this line here looks very Chrysler like? Gas goes in there. Just check out this massive trunk. Look, got all of this area over here. Just look at how far that goes. It's insane. Full size spare tire with bumper jack mounted on the side. Just notice this door frame is all framed out. Take a look at the materials used on the door panel. I love all of the different materials. Nice bright work to separate color and design. This feels like a vinyl. This is more of a texturized fabric. Armrest, door handle to get out, window crank for the big window. This one has vent windows. Coming down inside the pedal box, high beam switch brake pedal gas pedal hand brake just take a look at this interior here's what over the hood impression looks like here's what first person over the hood looks like on then to the button switches and knobs starting on the left and moving right key slash ignition just look at this binnacle display it looks very 59 ezel isk Gasoline gauge, headlights, wipers, speedometer, drive modes, read, park, reverse, neutral, drive, low. This one has the two-speed Ford Automatic. Just below the speedometer, there are a series of idiot lights for amp meter and oil pressure. I'm not sure which one is which, but they flank the odometer. Coolant temperature, defrost temperature, heat slash defrost. It's really cool, this page explaining everything. Lighter ashtray radio glove box. Just check this out. Nice overhead valve six with the fuel filter in the block. It's got dual horns. There's one there and there's one underneath the battery box down there. Battery box solenoid single master cylinder back there non-power assisted Let's check out the brace that goes to the two shock towers on the positive side Good fuel economy. These are pretty rare, all things considered. I've only seen one other one in the wild, and it's been a while since I saw it. Huge trunk, cool backstory against it. These are extremely rust prone, hence they're rare now. 
limited appreciation potential. There is no V8 option, which is a bummer. The 144 cubic inch displacement may be somewhat underpowered. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather, two scenarios today. In the first scenario, what would you rather have? 1961 Rambler Classic or 1961 Comet? Or 1961 Pontiac Tempest. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Now it's time for the second scenario. 1961 Chevy Corvair or 1961 Comet or 1961 Rambler American. Once again, going to leave this here. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. So there's a bit of a background story to that song. Um, for those that don't know, my grandpa was my best friend. He taught me everything. And he was in a club one night, and he came from a family of 13. And I'm not going to tell the whole story because um, it's really long. But um, he was dancing to that song in the club and um, he had a massive heart attack and he died. Yeah, well, he was dead for 16 minutes and he came back. And he, you know, medical science says if you're without oxygen for 10 minutes, you're brain dead. But he wasn't. He lived a totally normal life. God gave him um, 11 more years. He was 55 when he had the heart attack. He died the second time when he was 66, October 3rd, 2005. So, this is always like a bad time for me because it's been 18 years, but it it's it almost seems like yesterday in the same the same sense. If you guys want me to tell the whole story, maybe I'll do that as a side thing or maybe for a podcast or something like that. Just let me know in the comment section. It's a really cool story. But thank you guys all so much for coming out and watching this. I really appreciate all your support and everything that you bring in the comment section. Until next time, toodaloo!